South Africans continue to express their disgust at what appears to be a different set of rules for those in power when it comes to dealing with COVID-19 transgressions. This follows Police Minister Becky Kele's announcement that he has ordered an investigation into why Mpumalanga Premier Ntsweni Tepane who was not wearing a mask during the funeral of Jackson and Tembu on Sunday. Well, of course, we do all know now that the Premier has subsequently apologised. She's gone to the police station. She's said that she would uh, uh, donate a thousand masks and also, uh, also saying that she'll go into quarantine and apologise to everybody for what she did. Meanwhile, the Democratic Alliance has also written to the National Police Commissioner, Kehle Sitole, to act on a video showing men being searched slapped and shambocked for allegedly not wearing masks by anti-gang unit members in Worcester in the Western Cape last week. So the Independent Police Director, or IPAD, says the victims have opened a case and the matter is being investigated. Morning Live, in, uh, we've invited Minister Becky Tele to join us, and, but his office referred us to the National Police Commissioner, and we are still pursuing that particular interview. But joining us now to talk a bit about these transgressions and how things have been handled in South Africa, Edward, uh, Edwin, I beg your pardon, Edwin Makwati, a human rights lawyer from the Legal Resources Center, and Tumi Sole, who is an social activist, is joining us to talk. Good to see both of you. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you, Leanne, and thanks for having us on the Thank show. you. Thank you, Leanne. Um, and good morning to Timisol and the viewers as well. Yeah, awesome to have both of you and looking forward to this conversation. Tumi, have you been for your run yet? Because I know that that's the, <laughs> that's the order of the day. We've got to have our run before you do anything else. I had to finish, yeah, I had to finish a few um, emails, so I'm hoping I'll catch the afternoon shift with Alan Kijini on running. <laughs> Okay, good. Good, I'm glad. So let's, let's get to the, the, the business now of, of these transgressions. I mean, you, Tumi, I'll begin with you. you. You are one of the people who, who posted about this on social media. What will bring justice in your view? Um, thanks, Leanne. I think, you know, we, we, we operate in, in, in a world in South Africa where there are rules and regulations. And I think that the, the inconsistency is where these rules and regulations are not applied consistently. Um, and in these instances, with the Premier, for example, um, I think the best thing, in my view, she'd have to uh, step down. Um, the problem is she's always maintained her position, and only when there was an outcry that she ultimately said that she was remorseful. But there are people who, are, who have been arrested, there are people who are languishing in prisons uh, for not wearing masks, and she gets a free pass. And I think, unfortunately, she would have to just step down in my view. So, in your opinion, the, the latest development yesterday is not good enough. I mean, going to the police station, admitting guilt. But this was, this was only after, as you say, there was a huge outcry. And we even heard her spokesperson coming through and defending it. I think one of the, uh, one of the excuses I heard coming from the spokesperson is that, you know, when you, when you wear glasses all the time, you get so used to them on your face that, you know, you almost, you, you often fall asleep with them. Has that ever happened to you? And that's what happened with the minister. The, the, the premier she thought they were on it was on her face but it wasn't and this just this was a pill that south africa was not going to swallow but the subsequent apology and all of the other things that she said she's going to do is that not good enough for you i, I think had the spinning not happened we I, I think um south africans were going to accept that the problem is it was only i think at 3 p.m yesterday after such an outcry on twitter you know and, and, and in various forms i mean if you go back the, the spokesperson was defending she was on various sabc platforms talking about that was not a hack for example that was not what it was and effectively taking south africans for fools and i think that's actually why most south africans are saying if there are rules in place they need to apply consistently and to everyone and in these circumstances we find ourselves where some people have been arrested some people have criminal records but this premier for example is going to get um a free pass with a warning and now she she you know isolating for example and not everyone gets that and therefore hence i say those rules and regulations need to apply consistently and had she not spun this situation i think south africans could have been lenient mm. 
bring up some figures because this is important. You know, we saw this happening and playing out live on television. And l let me bring you into the conversation, Edwin. We, we heard from the minister who very proudly, this is Minister Becky Tele, very proudly on the, uh, at the beginning of January telling us as South Africans that 7,000 of us have been arrested because we were not wearing masks, i.e. South Africans were not wearing masks. So 7,000 people had been arrested because of this. Now, when we see the, the Premier not wearing a mask, being allowed to enter into the funeral, which in the first place doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't weigh up anyway, but then the statement is, we're going to investigate it. I don't think anybody that I know of that was arrested for not wearing a mask has had the privilege of an investigation into why they weren't wearing a mask. I mean, Edwin, what does this, what does this tell us when we talk about um, uh, Animal Farm here? Because that that's what everybody seems to be quoting. Thank you for the question, Ian. Um, I think one of the issues that we should be really concerned about is, like you say, uh, the, the law enforcement in South Africa is a sheer manifestation of George Orwell's animal farm, where some animals are equals, are all equals, but some are more equal than others. Um, and this shows in the way where law enforcement does not be applied equally uh, across the board to those that are the haves and those that are the have-nots, and also uh, pertaining to those people that are in power. And I think in the instance of the minister, uh, it's, it's something that we should be more concerned about uh, looking at the kind of office she holds and the power that she wields. And remember, this is not the first time that a, a person holding an office in government has transgressed the COVID-19 regulations. You remember the case of uh, the minister, um, I think it's in Davini Abrams, who also had a similar issue right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And of course, they always come with uh, uh, some lousy, uh, uh, we are sorry, and, and all that kind of stuff, we will not do it again. And then they do some gesture of goodwill, which is to play South Africans for fools. Um, and they do not take the, the, the people seriously. So what has to happen here is that over and above uh, those sanctions or fines or imprisonment, there must be uh, some higher standard to which these leaders are held. For example, even after paying the fine, we must see, for example, being suspended or being, being uh, uh, told to step down so that they can set a good example because COVID-19 has proven to be a catastrophe which we cannot um, take lightly. And if a minister has to do that and be told several times to wear a mask, then we should all be scared that we are chipping away at the credibility of law enforcement in South Africa. And as the credibility of law enforcement is eroded, it leads to a point where the rule of law itself breaks down, to a point where it will be a dog-eat-dog -dog war. Mm. I want to bring up another case because, and I know that this has been often referred to because there is a stark contrast, as you say, from the treatment of one person to another. Now, the incident happened the beginning of January again. Um, a gentleman with the surname LaRue goes to the shops after 10 o'clock at night to try and buy formula for his baby. Uh, while he was doing that, it was a one-month-old baby, he was arrested. Now, the, 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 he showed the police the formula. He showed the police officers the receipt. He tried to plead his innocence and tell them that this is the reason why he was out after curfew. They were having none of it. They arrested him and his wife had to drive his car with a baby. And, you know, anyway, that, that, that is the, 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 the story. Subsequently, I think those charges have been dropped against him. But this is exactly what we're talking about. Um, and, and I get back to that. Perhaps, Tumi, you want to you want to comment on that one, is that the Premier is still given the right of an investigation when it is blatantly in front of us that she wasn't wearing a mask. However, a normal South African citizen who is out and about, no, absolutely no chance of an investigation. You're thrown into jail without that. This, this has to really, really work at um, the psyche of South Africans and the respect that we show towards our leaders and also towards law enforcement agencies. What does that do to us? Absolutely. I think what, what, what it does really is it, it make, makes us not to respect the law um, because in, in, in any, I think, subsequent litigation for that matter, everyone will be saying, 
Again, there's a rule in place. It has to be applied consistently. Why are certain people being given the free pass? I mean, on, on, on the um, incident that you just mentioned, I mean, if you look at the exceptions, for example, I mean, it's clear that you have to wear a mask. Failure to do so will result in you being arrested if you fail to obey an instruction. But this gentleman really was at fault. And this one man, old baby, needed that formula. And surely what any reasonable police officer could have done is to warn him instead of throwing him into prison for the night, for example, and at least try and see how best the, the person could be assisted. But the point was um, he was not given that latitude or exception. He was instead thrown in. It says also um, an example with the video that I put up um, yesterday in the morning around about seven as well. The young gentleman, when Minister of Police was there, he was walking about and saw this gentleman. He was grabbed by his trousers. And, you know, the minister asked, where's your mask? And he apologized profusely. And cameras were rolling. Everyone was there. And then he was held into the back of a policeman. But none of that happens with the powers that be. And I think that's where the inconsistency and what I think um, Edwin had said with, with Animal Farm, we will never take them serious and it becomes the problem. So we need rules to be applicable equally and for all of us to respect those type of rules. You know, I, I'm going to be a little bit petty, but I don't think I am being petty because whenever we do hear about the rules of how to wear a mask, that is, that is also something that is a big conversation. And on more than one occasion, I have seen, and I think many of us have seen, the minister himself wearing the mask below his nose. Now, he has the audacity to arrest somebody for not wearing a mask, where, in effect, he's actually not wearing a mask either. So, you know, these are the kind of things. If you're going to lead by example, and if you are going to put yourself in a pedestal as somebody that is following the law to the last dot, then do so. And don't take it out on other South Africans just to prove a point. Now, this is a very important conversation because... Uh, as you mentioned to me, these are people, these are normal South Africans that are saying, I'm not going to abide by the laws if you can't do it yourself. Do you think, and also you have been very, I mean, you are very, very active on social media. We know that. You just said you posted that video, which we all saw. Do you think social media platforms have actually been effective in bringing attention to these issues that are plaguing our society? I think so, um, personally. I mean, again, going back, unfortunately, and me, I must make this point first, um, Jackson and 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 you know uh, rest his soul was a was a uh, an exemplary leader and 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 they saw rest in peace and he was always adamant and accessible to to people and always emphasized the importance of wearing a mask. Unfortunately, we should be sitting and talking about his legacy and the lessons. And now we're here talking about a premier who at his funeral really um, you know contravened. The laws. So it was through social media, it was through Facebook and, and all these platforms and people calling into radio stations on TV that the pressure was exerted. I think if people didn't really care and didn't, you know, um, understand the impact, you could have let it slide. So I think the pressure and the nice thing about social media is you no longer have to send an email to the president or, or to the spokesperson. You check them on Twitter, on Facebook, and the notifications pile up. And the best thing to do, and I think what happened here was there were conversations behind the scenes, and hence the Minister of Police immediately said, we will investigate. But if you look at it, the spokesperson rather instead said, well, the, 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 the Premier was not warned, um, you know, she subsequently complied, and, and, and all of that. So there was a bit of spinning, but the pressure was so much that ultimately the only result was an apology and, 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 and really now saying that um, she's going to admit to guilt. Yeah. All right. Let me, Edwin, let me bring you back here. What, what are some human rights, civil society organizations and lobby groups saying about this phenomenon that we are talking about, or, or including the, the Legal Resource Center and Human Rights Commission? What the Legal Resources Center is doing, together obviously with this, some of its strategic partners within South Africa and outside of South Africa, is that we have, you know, for years been helping people with these kind of issues where uh, the marginalized and the poor are always bearing the brand of the law, while those that are at the top uh, live in, in total paradise and do not subscribe to any moral code or ethical conduct. Um, we do strategic litigation. For example, you remember at the beginning of the lockdown, there was a case of, of Collins of Collins Corsa, for example. And before it was, uh, there was a settlement reached out of court. We were assisting the family with uh, with their getting a recourse 
for the death of their family member. Mm -hmm. And also there's a case of uh, the Cape Town man who was pulled out of his shack naked, uh, uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. uh, Polani. Uh, which the LRC helped for him to get some redress for the shame that he faced. And several others. There are many others that I cannot mention because, you know, we, we are always on the ground and doing all this work to ensure that the protection of people's rights is put first and forefront. Um, we understand that there is COVID. We understand the regulations are there. Uh, but the Bill of Rights, uh, Human Rights Standards and uh, International Law, always said it to be, to, to be respected uh, even when enforcing regulations. It doesn't matter how much people fear COVID or how much COVID has destroyed uh, the, the, the fiber of South African society. But what matters is that in the process of doing so, we should not find ourselves creating a Frankenstein that we wouldn't be able to rein in even after, long, after COVID has long passed. Because the more police officers get the power, to, to, to do whatever they want to people, they do not forget even after the disaster is over. Mm. So the Legal Resources Center has been doing this advocacy. We've been holding workshops. We've been engaging with communities to know their rights and what steps to take uh, when such things happen to them so mm. that uh, those that do so do not go with impunity. Listen to this tweet. Just received this from Carrie writing into us and saying, Yesterday, halfway through our walk, we sat on a bench along the beachfront to drink some water or some coffee. A cop car rolled up, screaming at us to wear our masks we were drinking at the time. The irony? Question mark. Four cops in the car, not a single mask being worn. Now help me understand this because... I will abide by the law if you abide by the law. And you are setting the example. I've said this about three times during the interview now. Edwin, you know, this is, this is where we fail as a nation because we are told to do one thing. We switch on the television and we look around us to the people that are enforcing the laws are not doing what we've been told to do. So how do you lead by example? And I mean, when we talk on a legal issue here and, the le and what the law says about this, I mean, surely they can be held accountable as much as we're held accountable. Yeah, um, you know, when it comes to enforcement of the law, even those that enforce the law are not above the law. I mean, that is ideally what should be the case. But there is this culture or custom that is developed amongst our law enforcement people that they are above the law and everybody else is above them. Um, and the, their way of enforcing the law is one that is very reminiscent of what was happening even during apartheid. Although now maybe we do not have much of, uh, uh, we don't have uh, racial apartheid, it's more of economic apartheid. And to be a victim of police brutality and to be a victim of uh, uh, these abuses by the police, you must be poor and marginalized. I mean, in all the cases I've dealt with, is the way the police perceive the people that they enforce the law upon, that they carry all those things that they've learned in the past and use them today in a democratic dispensation. And I think that has to come more with education and ensuring that into our law enforcement agencies, we get people who are qualified and educated enough to do so. Uh, because maybe the, one of the problems that we picked in the, in the police department, for example, is functional uh, illiteracy, um, where we don't know if the people that are enforcing these rules, can they even read and write the rules that they're enforcing? Do they even understand what regulations are and what the law is and how it works? Um, that is one problem. So the problem right now within South Africa is not a training need, but an education need uh, within, within the law enforcement. And the more, if we can deal with this at the grassroots level, we'll be talking about the same things even in 10 years to come. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I've got to wrap this. I really don't want to because it, it's just such a great conversation. I can see people are doing this, uh, uh, responding a lot. I mean, there was even the incident of, of um, uh, the MEC Becky and Tully's wife going to the funeral in an ambulance. Now, she was escorted there. She was COVID positive, but still went there and was given... Uh, you know, the ability to be at her husband's funeral, even though she was COVID positive. Again, another instance where that would not happen for a normal citizen, would it, to me? No, absolutely not. And, and I think it was Dr. Um, uh, um, uh, um, Keyes, and not the Minister of Health, who, who also said, you know, I mean, he's a uh, frontline worker, he's a doctor, um, he's on Twitter, and he spoke about, we, we do understand what death um, causes in terms of destruction and emotional loss and everything that comes with it. But yeah. if South Africans, for example, are mourning and you lose a parent, a lover, or a sibling for that matter, and you don't even get to see them, 
once you make an exception and you allow, for example, the, the, the MEC's wife or, or the premier or any other person in authority, that yeah. exception, it means all of us should be allowed. Absolutely. And therefore, it makes the rules, uh, you know, uh, yeah. useless. All right. Gentlemen, thank you and goodbye. And goodbye to everybody that's <laughs> watching as well. They're going to let us go on SABC2. Thanks so much for your time. Sakina, what an interesting discussion. Indeed. And we'll pick it up again tomorrow on SABC2. Take care. Bye, everyone. <laughs>